friends, welcome to another week at Children's Liturgy here at St. Pius Church. If it is your first time joining us, welcome. We're so glad to have you here. If you've been with us for a number of weeks, well, welcome back. Today we are going to be tackling some kind of challenging, sort of sad readings a little bit, but that's okay. We're going to start off on a positive note and we'll go from there. But the timing actually works out well, because as we probably know, in just a few short days, we are going to be at Ash Wednesday. And Ash Wednesday, as we probably know, is a day where we are reminded of the fact that we are not perfect people. We enter into that season of Lent to get ready for Easter. And normally, as part of our Lenten journey, we try to make a little change in our life. Now, sometimes that might be giving something up that maybe isn't good for us, right? Maybe we're going to give up certain snacks or certain junk food. Sometimes it might also mean adding something new to our life that will be good for us. Like, you know, I'm going to spend an extra five minutes in prayer each day. Or I'm going to try to read one Bible story a week that I'm not already doing. So give some thought, maybe even talking about it with your classmates or at home in your, in your family. Give some thought to if there's something maybe special you could do this year for Lent, either taking away something that's not so good for you or adding something that might be good for you. All right, friends, we are going to jump right into our opening song and we'll get rolling with today's children's liturgy. See you in a bit. This is how we love us, so with love that's unconditional. 
Hello everyone, I invite you to join me in the opening prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Healing God, there are many people who need our friendship. Sick people, lonely people, and people we do not like. Put in our hearts a real love for them. We make this prayer to you through Jesus, your Son, Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. A reading from the book of Leviticus. It is written in the law, people who have a scab or an open sore on their skin, and it becomes leprosy, must be brought to one of the priests. The priest must tell them that they are unclean, because anyone with leprosy is considered unclean by the law. Those who have leprosy must wear torn clothes and must not wear anything on their heads. They must live outside the camp, away from the other people. When they come into town, they must shout out loud, Unclean! Unclean! They will be considered unclean as long as they have the disease of leprosy. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. All right. I want you to imagine something. I think, I think this is going to be an easy one for you to imagine. I want you to imagine that there is a contagious disease going around, a disease that other people can catch if you have it and you can catch from others. And people are afraid of this disease. Nobody wants to get it. In fact, people will go to great lengths to avoid getting it, including staying away from others, staying isolated and alone. Can you imagine that? Probably not much imagining required, right? People naturally were afraid of diseases. They scare us, right? Maybe we're worried about getting sick. Maybe we're worried about what will happen if we get sick. Sometimes we might even be worried about getting others sick and what might happen to them. People are naturally afraid of disease. And that's what we hear about in our story today. In this reading from the book of Leviticus, we hear that people are afraid. They're afraid of, of getting leprosy. And so they're making sure that those people with leprosy stay away, that they're separated. You might you might say this is probably the first example of social distancing, forcing others to stay away so that we don't catch what they have. These people with leprosy, they're cast out from society. They're pushed away. They're separated from the rest of the people. They can't interact with them. They couldn't really come into town, and, and when they did, they had to shout unclean so others would stay away. They're separate from the community. They're separated from their friends, from their families, from all the people they know and love. It's easy to put ourselves in their shoes, I think, except they couldn't have Zoom get-togethers or FaceTime or text or call each other. They were really separated in a way that few of us ever have to experience. This would have been a really difficult life. The only thing that they had that maybe made things better was they could be together as a community of those who were sick. But the reality was that no one outside of that group wanted to be near them, let alone touch them. People back then didn't understand diseases very well. We have a much better idea and understanding of how diseases work today. They thought leprosy was more than just a disease you could catch. They thought it could be a punishment from God. They thought that people would be punished with leprosy for doing things that God didn't want them to do, for sinning, for breaking God's laws and breaking God's rules. Leprosy was a punishment for not following God. Imagine how badly someone with leprosy would have wanted to be healed, to be well again, to be able to see their friends and their family, to come into the community, to be close to others. But not just that, also to be close to God because they understood their leprosy to be a way of saying that they weren't close to God, that they had distanced themselves from him. Imagine being one of those lepers. Imagine what it would have been like to be cast out from society. Wouldn't you do anything you could to get back into that community? Well, stay tuned, and I think we'll hear a little bit more about that. Friends, it is time for our psalm and our alleluia, and then I will see you friends next week. My God.
reading from the Gospel of Mark. One day a man who had leprosy came to Jesus because he wanted Jesus to heal him. He knelt in front of Jesus and said, if you want to, you can cure me. Jesus felt very sorry for the man and so he reached out and touched him and said, I do want to cure you. You are cured right now. The man was cured of his leprosy immediately. Then Jesus warned the man saying, now don't tell anyone about this, but go and show yourself to the priests as Moses said, and make an offering because you have been cured. But instead, the man went away and began to tell everyone what happened. Because of this, Jesus was not able to go into any town without being noticed by everyone. So he stayed outside the towns, but people still kept coming from everywhere to see him. The Gospel of the Lord. Nobody likes to be left out. You all know the feeling when people are picking teams, say, and you're saying to yourself, oh, pick me, pick me. But worse than getting picked last would be if we didn't get picked at all. We just got passed by and, and nobody seemed to notice. And sometimes we may feel like that, that nobody sees us, nobody cares. There is everybody else having a good time. And here you are, left out. Well, that was the life of the leprous man we met in today's gospel. Due to the, the skin disease he had, he was forced to live apart from everybody else. Nobody wanted to be around him for fear that they might get sick with whatever he had. So you can see why this man wanted to be healed oh so bad. Not only to get rid of the disease, but also to be able to belong, to no longer be isolated from everybody else. He was lost and wanted to be found. So when he hears that Jesus is coming, you can see the hope of rising in him that maybe, just maybe, you can imagine him saying to himself, maybe this is my chance to be chosen, to be healed, to be found and belong. But knowing that he had no right to be healed, had no claim on it, he knelt in front of Jesus, we hear, and, and begged Jesus, if you want to, you can cure me. He recognizes that Jesus has the power to heal him but also that Jesus is free in how and when he uses this power. But do you remember Jesus' response? What did we hear? Jesus was moved to the very depths of his being for this man and the suffering he experienced. And out of this deep compassion, Jesus defied all custom and reached out and touched him declaring the leprous man healed, and so he was. For Jesus, you see, chose to come and seek the lost. He chose to come in search of you and me, to heal us, to save us, to make us belong to the family of God. For those who are in Jesus, we always belong. For we belong to our Heavenly Father, in him, we are found and most certainly no longer lost. Well, that brings us near to the end for another week here. Thanks so much for joining us. We've got one closing song to kind of wrap us up and look forward to seeing you next week as we launch into a new season in the church, the season of Lent. So we'll see you all next week. 